My name is San Jacob Ta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Today, actually, I'm I'm stuck on call, so I'm doing this from a bed and breakfast outside my hospital. Uh, but I'd promised myself that I was going to do a video every day, so um, this is a little bit of a makeshift video, but uh, I hope you still find it interesting. So today's video is called When All Endpoints Are Not Equal, The Problem With Combining Outcomes. In medicine, we love numbers. They make things look clean, clear, definitive. But sometimes the neatest numbers are the ones that mislead us the most. Today I want to talk about composite endpoints. This is a statistical tool used in many clinical trials that sounds logical, but often hides more than it reveals. So what are composite endpoints? Okay, let's say you're studying a new heart medication. You want to see if it reduces serious outcomes like death, heart attacks or hospitalizations. But here's the problem. Not many people die during a short trial so the numbers are small. That means that the study might not be statistically significant. You know, to be statistically significant, you need a big difference between outcomes between the two groups that you're studying. And if you've got only a small number of patients or you're following them up only for a short period of time, the number of events like death are going to be very, are generally going to be low and therefore you may not see a major difference. So what do we do? And what, they, what researchers often do is they bundle outcomes together into one larger endpoint. So we say this drug reduces the risk of death, non-fatal heart attack, stroke and hospital ad admission all together as if they're equal, right? So now you've basically increased the chance of an event by four times because you've combined four things. So these are all bundled together as if they're equal. But here's the thing, they're not not all outcomes are created equal. Let's imagine a trial that shows a 20% reduction in the composite endpoint. That sounds impressive, right? But then you look closer. No difference in death, no difference in heart attacks. The entire benefit was from a slight reduction in hospital admissions for mild chest pain. So the big win becomes a small shrug. And yet it is published, it's quoted, and it's used in guidelines. It makes headlines. Drug X cuts major events by 20%. But all that benefit is simply from a reduction in the number of hospitalizations, which may or may not even be for anything serious. Patients, however, assume that they will live longer, when in reality they might just avoid one extra night in hospital. Why does this happen? I think researchers aren't trying to deceive. Composite endpoints increase statistical power. They let us study important questions in shorter time frames with fewer participants. But the problem is interpretation because the weight of a trial is often carried by its weakest component. And unless we break it down, we don't know what the headline number whether the headline number reflects life saved or just paperwork avoided. So real world examples, one of them is antiplatelet trials. These often combine death, non-fatal heart attack and minor revascularization, i.e. putting in a stent. But a stent for stable angina is not the same as surviving a cardiac arrest. Again, if you look at heart failure drugs, uh, heart failure drug trials, they may combine mortality, hospitalization and change in a biomarker such as BNP. But a rise in BNP doesn't really matter to a patient who feels fine. The question is, what do patients actually care about? And patients don't speak in endpoints. They speak in fears and hopes. Will I live longer? Will I be able to walk to the shops again? Will I die in hospital or at home? When we present a drug as beneficial because it reduces events, we must be honest about what those events are. Otherwise, we're not just bending statistics. We're actually bending trust. So what can we do differently? Well, as clinicians, researchers and educators, we should disaggregate the data, show which components actually changed and be clear about absolute benefit, not just relative risk. And above all, it's important to remember that not every number reflects a meaningful difference to the patient's life. So in the end, I would say composite endpoints are tools, useful, yes, but not always transparent and not always fair to the people whose lives and hopes they claim to represent. 
So it's important not to be seduced by the bundle statistic. We should open the bundle, look inside and ask, is this a number that saves lives or just a number that flatters the paper? Because what matters most should never be combined into silence. I hope you found this useful.